What's up guys? Today's video is all about the Kamigawa Neon Precon. That's a mouthful. Buckle up. Now this is a really cool vehicle commander focused deck, but we're gonna do something a little bit different this time. Instead of our normal 15 cards in for under $50 to go with the main strategy of the deck, I decided to drive this deck in a slightly different direction. We're going a hundred dollar budget this time with 20 cards in to totally change the look and feel of the deck. So without further ado, let's see where we're going. First off, let's go over the commander for this deck. Katori Pilot Prodigy is one, a white and a blue for 2-4 Legendary Moonfolk Pilot. It has vehicles you control have crew two, which is honestly what most people focus on, being able to crew up massive vehicles for really cheap is pretty cool. However, her second ability, which is at the beginning of combat on your turn, target artifact creature gains lifelink and vigilance, is probably the stronger of the two abilities. And that's the one that I really wanted to focus on. I feel like this commander would really benefit more from an artifact and life gain matters build versus just a straight up vehicles build. So that's going to be the goal of the deck, making huge artifact creatures swinging in for lots of life gain while our opponents are left in the ditch. So what cards in this deck already help with that strategy? Kappa Cannoneer has been making waves in Legacy and for good reason because it is a absolute house. This card does everything we want including making a massive creature that only gets bigger for every artifact you play which is going to be a lot. Short Guy is just an amazing card and I know I said we weren't going to be focusing on vehicles however ones that are just this good is really hard to pass up, especially when we do still have that crew two ability from our commander. Being able to get an 8-8 on turn four that can swing in for eight life gain is really tough to pass up. And last but not least, Master of Ethereum is a Lord, which buffs all of our artifact creatures. However, don't count it out as it can get pretty massive just by itself. Now I didn't mention a whole lot of all-stars there, so what cards are we putting in? Well, first up, we got to add some more big artifact creatures to lay the beat down with. And no one does it better than Bronze Guardian. This thing is amazing. Not only does it have double strike for double the life gain, it also protects itself and protects all your other artifact creatures and gets stronger with every artifact you play. Pretty much the epitome of this deck. Phyrexian Colossus is a bit of a weird one. I know it does cost eight life to untap, which you can do at instant speed, mind you. However, when this thing swings in, it's gaining eight life anyways, and is really hard to block. Patchwork Automaton is keeping with the Bronze Guardian theme of caring about how many artifacts you have in play. This thing also protects itself and gets a plus one counter every time you play an artifact. Early game, you can drop this and buy turn four or five. This thing is going to be the biggest creature on the board. Phyrexian Processor is one of the best things you can be doing with all that extra life gain. Yes, the creatures it makes are not artifact tokens for whatever reason. Talk about a huge flavor miss, Watsy. I'm sure it would be overpowered if they were. But you're going to have all that life anyways. You might as well turn it into massive creatures every turn. And I couldn't forget Lion Sash, which is another really cool card to come out of the set. Not only is it a creature that gets bigger by exiling your opponent's graveyards, but it then turns itself into a massive equipment when you do get your bigger creatures out. Cleric Class is a great little card. It cares about life gain, it buffs up your creatures, and you can get your biggest creature back from the graveyard whenever you want. Master Transmuter is a great card for cheating out expensive artifacts and your biggest artifact creatures. And being in blue, you know I had to add some artifact card draw. Yes, Thoughtcast is already in here, but what about Thought Monitor? This is a great card from MH2 that not only gives you a flyer, but also really cheap card draw, assuming you have a board of artifacts, which you probably should. And of course we had to add Fabricate. Being able to tutor any artifact card you need into your hand is just too good to pass up. So we had a lot of high CMC cards there, and while we are going to be taking a few high CMC cards out to balance it out, this deck was not exactly high in the ramp department, so I decided to add five more pieces of artifact ramp to really get the motor running. Hedron Archive, Mindstone, Thran Dynamo, and Wayfarer's Bobble really don't need any introduction as they're all staples, and Liquid Metal Torque is 
on its way to be a staple too. The one thing I want to point out about it, of course, is it turns any of your non-artifact creatures into an artifact creature for that life gain. Little extra corner case, but still a really cool add. And last but not least, we had to add the life gain win cons. Aetherflux Reservoir is a pretty obvious add at this point. We're gaining lots of life, casting lots of spells. This thing is at least going to be a one player killer, potentially the whole board if they really let it go unchecked. A Johnny Strength of the Pride may seem like a weird win con here, but being able to drop this guy down and wipe your opponent's board of all non-land permanents, leaving your board free and clear just for having a little bit extra life is really fun. We're in white, we're talking life gain and artifacts. Of course, the Heliod Ballista combo is going to be in here. If you're not familiar with it, go look it up. I'm not going to explain it here, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're also running Triskillian as a backup for Ballista. So those are the cards we added, but what did we take out? First up is the Planeswalker Jace, Architect of Thought. And honestly, I'm not sure what WotC was thinking when they put this card in the deck. There are so many good blue Planeswalkers that care about artifacts. Why this one? Smith isn't an artifact creature, and I didn't think its go-wide ability was really all that good. Aeronaut Admiral cares about vehicles, but we cut most of the vehicles. Atsumasa the Animator is the monocolor backup commander for this deck, and is really cool. It's just not the direction we're going. Raph was a weird include. We already have Shimmer Mirror in the deck. If they wanted another Flash Artifacts card, they really should have just reprinted Vidalcan Ori. Word of the Rogue is cool, but we're not really going super wide with the deck. Cataclysmic Gear Hulk sounds cool, but never works as well as you'd hope. Cyber Drive Awakener is a cool card, but I feel like only works well if you're going wide with non-creature artifact tokens or vehicles, neither of which we're doing. Armed and Armored cares about vehicles, and Access Denied is a huge amount of mana to leave up in hopes that you get more than three Thopters. Honestly, just put in a counter spell and you'll be much better off. Last but not least, we cut 10 vehicles from the deck. I wasn't kidding when I said we were taking this deck in a different direction. Yes, a vehicles deck is super cool and you can absolutely build that if you want to, that's just not how we were going. And real quick, I want to talk about the mana base. Yes, it's a pre-con. Yes, it needs to be upgraded. But this is even worse than the Upgrades Unleashed pre-con, which I didn't even think was possible. 30 basic lands is unacceptable, especially in the Artifact Matters deck, when the Artifact lands are dirt cheap. Why were these not included? You should absolutely throw them in if you have them. And if you don't, they're going to be like 25 cents. And normally I do a more detailed stats, but we're just gonna show them side by side, the original pre-con versus the upgrades we've made. Obviously ramp was the biggest category, but everything saw a slight increase. And I think that's gonna do it. Obviously this deck can benefit more from upgrades to the mana base, getting more big artifact creatures in there that I didn't talk about. But all in all, I think this is a really fun direction for the deck and will be unique to all of your friends who've built the vehicle pre-con. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. And I'll catch you next time.